Hi, this is another video about uh, the cash flow tables. However, this video will be focusing on the interest rate tables. In the last video, we talked about the cash flow diagram and how we could convert this diagram into cash flow table. And then from that table, we could conduct some uh, analysis like the net present value and other things. Uh, however, we're going to continue on that. So one of the things is, when, when you become an uh, economic analyst, you need to understand the cash flow. And there is a pattern that you should be aware of. And these patterns, we call it um, a, a, a parameter or a, or a factor in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the financial situation. So these factors could be uh, a uniform series. This is the, what I'm sharing here, the slide. And a, a uniform series factor, or what we call the, we, we give it a notation A, it's a concept when you have an equal amounts of money invested or paid at a time period of fund. So for example, if you purchased an apartment for $50,000, so this is a money that you paid out of your pocket, $50,000, so this is a negative cash flow, and you're expecting to, to collect a $1,000 every month, so that, that would be the revenue of positive cash flow, as this is where you see the positive hours going up. So as you see, all of these payments are uh, equal over the, uh, over the uh, five year period or 60 months period. And therefore we call it a uniform series. And again, what we're trying to do, we're trying to analyze the cash flow diagram because we need to better understand the situation. And when, when we better understand the situation, we could, uh, we could, uh, better making or making a better decisions. So again, the first annotation is A, this is a parameter A or what we call the uniform series. And another parameter uh, is a uh, uppercase G or a lowercase G. And uh, for the uppercase G, this is the arithmetic gradients. And when you have a cash flow, is changing in uh, an expected way by the same amount uh, each period. So, for example, if you invested in a uh, in a stock market five hundred dollars, and now you're expecting to receive two hundred fifty on the first month, the second month this two hundred fifty will increase by two hundred and fifty dollars. So you will be receiving a five hundred on the second month. The third month would be 750. The fourth month is a 1000. The fifth month is a 1250. So what we see here, we see a constant increase. And again, this could be a decrease as well, but uh, to simplify things, we're gonna go start with a with an increase and then you could apply the same scenario for the decrease. So if you have a, a constant amount for decreasing, that would call it the arithmetic gradients or uppercase G. For the lowercase g, this is also an increase or decrease. However, it's uh, it's not a constant amount, but it's we're using a percentage. So, for example, as you see, invested five hundred dollars in a in the stock market, and you're expecting to receive uh, uh, a, an increase of sixty percent. So, the first month you receive two hundred fifty. The next month is expected to receive sixty percent increase. So that would be 400, another 60% for the third month, that would be 640 and so on. As you see, this is also increase or could be a decrease, uh, but however, this is not in a constant amount, but in a constant percentage increase or a decrease in a constant percentage. Also, what, we, what we've learned in the past about the present value, which is the principal, sometimes we call it principal, sometimes we call it per, uh, present value. And also we've learned about the future value and how we, and this is uh, a, a, an amount of money in present value would be equal to a specific amount in the future if it's invested in an I equal percent. So we so far we've, we've covered um, the annotation P, the annotation F, the annotation I for the interest rate, the annotation A for the uniform series, the uniform, uh, the, the annotation G for the arithmetic gradients, which is the constant increase, and the little, uh, lowercase G for the geometric uh, gradients. And now 
what we're going to show you here, this, these are the equations that we find the relation between A and P, F and A. And we've learned about another um, uh, parameter between the relation between P and F, which is F equal to, I'm gonna write it down here so you could remember this because this is the main equation that we're going to use it. F equal to the P times one plus I, to the power of n. So these are, uh, there's a parenthesis here and to the power of n here. So there is, this is the main, the, the equation that I wrote down, this is the main equation that we're going to build the whole sciences based on this. This is the time value of money, uh, one plus i, okay, to the power of n. So this is what we have. This is the same equation that we've learned earlier in the chapter, but we're going to, uh, the, the, the science, the economics and cost of science is based on this because of the time value of money. However, these value, these, this is a simple one, F equal P times one plus I to the power of one is a simple equation. However, there we're going into a more advanced equations and therefore in these equations, no matter what you do, you will make mistakes because we're human, we could do a, a type or something. So sometimes, Applying these equations could be a difficult and could be a challenge. So what I do remember when I taught this class a few years ago, uh, we, we did not use Excel before that. So I used to teach this class based on equations and it was very hard. So now we're lucky to, that we switched to Excel and we have alternatives of, of these equations uh, using Excel functions. So uh, I, this is the last time that you're gonna see the equation here, but I wanna put it here. So for your information, and this is what the behind the scene on Excel operations you will see. So going back to the factors. So uh, again, these are the, uh, the equations that will show the relationship between A and P and F and A depends on what you want. Now let's go back to the, let's let's continue. I'm gonna move on from this uh, from this relationship and equations into the most important topic for this video, which is the time value of money factors. And the factors we have, we have several factors. So one is F over P factor, which means find the future value if the present value is given. What does that mean? So some people will make a mistake and say, Okay, well, where I get F and I should divide it by P. No, this is a notation. This is um, a parameter. It's F over P. And that means is find the future value if P is given. Another factor that we will be using is P over F factor, which means, again, this is another factor. It's not a division. Do not divide anything. Uh, it's find P if, a, if F is given. The next parameter, the next fork factor would be A over F, which means find A if F is given. Next would be A over P, find A if P is given. Again, this is not the division. There's a common mistake where students will do is to come back to me and say, I couldn't find the value of A and how I'm gonna divide that, that by P to, to solve this, this parameter, this factor. No, this is a factor. And thus, we will go to a factor to the interest rate tables that I will share with you in just a second, uh, what we do for these factors. So we have F over P, P over F, A over F, A over P, F over A, P over A, A over G factor. And again, the first one is find this A, which is the annual, uh, the uniform series if the arithmetic gradient is given find the present value if the uniform series is given, um, find a future value if the uniform series is given, et cetera. So now how we could derive this factor. So again, one time, one time I told you based on um, the equations, another way for doing it, for solving the whole economics or for conducting the whole economics and, uh, and cost analysis uh, using the factors, which is important. Um, so we write it this way, uh, a future value equal to the P times this factor. This is a factor, this is not an equation, which means find F if P is given for the interest rate I for the number of years. So if we have a present value of $1,000, F over P, this is going, what we're going to look into the tables and 10% is the rate in the number of years is, now, is 10. 
Now let's go to the interest rate table. And this is what we're going to share with you. So if you go to the any textbook, you will find interest rate tables, which I don't have it in my textbook because, because I'm going to use Excel all the time. However, I want you to know how to use these interest rate, interest rate tables. There are a lot of, um, um, of textbook using it, they put it as an appendix. So this is based on, I went to Google and I, found, I, I typed interest rate table Oxford and I selected the first link. This is the compound interest rate tables for appendix C and you should be able to see all the factors. So now where are these factors? These are factors that are divided into three groups. One is a single payment, uniform, uniform payment series, arithmetic gradients. And in here, you will see F over P factor, P over F, A over F, A over P, F over A, P over A, A over G, P over G. And these are factors, there's a meaning. Again, do not divide them. Do not think that you need to divide. This factor mean, or this um, um, fact, this uh, notation means find F given P. All right, so let's go back to this question here. As you see the question saying, if I want to, uh, if I have uh, uh, a, a present value of $1,000 and I need to find interest rate of 10% in 10 years. So 10% in 10 years, where is that going to go? So we're going to want to find the interest rate table for 10%. So the percentage is located on the, right and left upper corners. So we need to find the 10%. So that's a three and go down to seven and nine and 10%. So this is the table that we're looking for, 10%, okay? Now the next step is to find which factor we're looking for. Find F, we need to find the future value if the present value is given. So that would be this column here, the second column. And then we need to find out what would be the number of years. This is the next one. So if we're say n equal 10, the factor would be 2.594. We bring it to the equation here. Let's go back to 0.59. As you see, 1000 times the factor. And this factor is taken from the interest rate table and multiply the 10,000 by, by uh, the 1,000 by the 2.59, and that would give you 25,940 is the future value of the uh, uh, $1,000 um, in a present format. And we could apply the same thing. So all you need to do is one more time, you go find what interest rate table that you want to use. Uh, let's say, for example, if say uh, I equal to 15%, this is the uh, table, uh, the interest rate table for 15%. And then you next find which factor you want to use. Is it F over P, P over F, A over F, A over P, F over A, and then find the number of years. So let's say the number of years is 20. So then we're going to go to the 20 here. These are the values that we're going to use. Now let's say the factor is A over P. So now we have to find uh, A, the uniform series, if P is given. So we take this number here, we multiply it by the present value to find what would be the equivalent uh, of the present value in the A format. All right, so I think that's uh, that should be enough for this video. I will see you in another video.